Yo guys, it's up, it's Free Pro here, and today I have a really, really exciting video for you. Seriously, I cannot wait to show you this. So this is a live stream, but this is not any live stream. This is an interactive live stream, meaning that I can write two in the chat and choose which way I want to go, what action I want to perform. As you can see, soon enough, the live stream is going to update, and as you can see, my vote is going to pop in and I will be able to choose whether to go left and right. In this case, I chose right. If more people chose, the more people would appear in the votes and naturally the majority would have won. So now that I went right, I can choose whether to MLG, water bucket or descend slowly. You know what, I'm gonna risk it, I'm gonna MLG. So I'm gonna vote one and let's see if it actually goes through. And as you can see now, my character decided to MLG, water bucket. Let's see if it actually is gonna be able to land the MLG. And as you can see, the video is updating right now. Okay, it seems like it, it will be able to do it, maybe. Oh, it doesn't even have a water bucket. He has to craft it. What a noob. Anyway, this is the finished result. And you can actually go play it right now. If you're watching this video as soon as it released, there is going to be a 24 hours live stream playing this. So you will be able to play this with your friends and with the chat by just voting in the chat whether ch whatever choice you want to do. And it seems like Nico the Pro has hit the MLG water buckets. Anyway, this live stream is being broadcasted from a Google Cloud machine. And I'm probably gonna do the same for, you know, the 24 hour live stream, just so I don't have to leave my computer running all day. Anyway, now that you see the finished result, let's look at the code and see how it gets done. Actually, no, let's not look at the code, but let's look at this video. This is an interactive video I created a few months ago. The way that this works is that I play Minecraft, but you get to decide where I go next and what actions do I do. You may say, Nico, how do I do that? Well, you do that by clicking on end screens. This is a 40 second video, but you can click on a certain end screen to go to the next part and, you know, make a decision. And there are plenty of decisions to make. Like, for example, you can choose to MLG water bucket, make a jump for it. Uh, you can attempt, uh, at example, building a bridge. And based, oh, okay, well, that, that was a roof, that's a spoiler. Based on the decisions you make, you're gonna either die or progress. Now, this is really fun, and a lot of people enjoyed this style of content, but I wanted to make this even more interactive. How much more interactive? Well, with a live stream. And this is what this code does. Basically, what I want to do is translate the options that you see on the end screens of the videos into something that you can actually interact with, with live chat. So I wrote this little script in Python right here that is going to be in the description of the video. And basically what this script does is literally just that, in combination with OBS. Now, I don't know how I can actually show you OBS while I'm recording. Let me see if we can open another window of OBS. Uh, okay, well, this is giving me a warning, but you know what? We're going to do it anyway, because you know what? Okay, I'm still recording. I never did this before. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, let me put this over here. And this is OBS, but we're actually going to switch to the first scene and uh, okay well this is a little bit awkward because it's recording my okay it's fine i'm not gonna worry about it anyway this is actually the input from the stream now as you can see right now it's always looping the same initial video but if i press on play stuff is gonna change because the video is actually gonna restart and then something magic is gonna happen once this video ends so i get prompted to make a choice either get wood or go caving another video is gonna start another video is gonna start based on the votes that you see on screen you may say, Nico, how is this possible? How is this even a thing? All right, so let's see how this gets done. The first thing that you guys need to know is that I use two libraries to communicate with YouTube. PyTube makes me able to download videos from YouTube. PyChat makes me able to read live chat of a live stream. All right, so the first thing I do is I define an initial video ID. In this case, my ID of the initial video is the beginning of the interactive video series because it makes sense to begin from here. Now, once I defined this initial video, I'm gonna try to get some information about it. And this is what the play loop does. This is happening right on start. I'm gonna explain why all of these loops are here and all of this complicated code is here, but for now, you just have to worry about this. So let's see what the get video from ID function does. All it does is that it uses the PyTube library in order to get information about this video, with the ID being the initial video ID. So what sort of information I want to get from this video? Well, the first thing is the end screen info. I want to know how many end screens are on the video and, you know, what are the respective end screens linking to. Luckily, this is pretty simple to do. There is actually in the video info some information about end screen and all of that stuff. 
so I'm just collecting all of that info and returning it back. As you can see, I'm iterating for every end screen that is a video, so if the end screen is like a subscribe uh, circle thing, I don't want that. I'm gonna get the title of the end screen, the ID the end screen is linking to, so the video ID, and also the duration. You might say, Nico, why do you need the duration? Well, I'm, I'm gonna explain in just a sec. Other than getting this information about the end screens, I'm gonna get the same information about the video that I'm currently looking at as well. So the title, the ID, and the duration. Actually, I didn't even need to use this library, I could have just navigated into this page using a request and then gotten back and parsed the response, but this library makes my job much easier. Now, it would be a lie if I said that I didn't spend like two hours trying to parse the information manually before that I knew that this library existed, but you know, let's move on. Anyway, once this function is done, it's gonna return us the video information. Now, all of this code right here is just some try and catch. Sometimes, for some reason, the library doesn't work, and so it will return an exception. I'm gonna make sure that you are gonna try to attempt the same thing like five times, and if it doesn't work, then get back to the original video and try again. So we have the video ID and we have all of the end screens of the video. So what we can do is initialize our choice. I'm gonna store all of the possible end screens in a variable, and then I'm gonna go ahead and download and play the video. Now I'm gonna explain download and play video and what it actually does, because literally it's more complicated than this, like the function name abstracts it a lot, uh, but then after we actually downloaded and played the video, we're gonna wait for the video to end. So this is why we're getting the video duration, it's so we can wait that amount of time. And after the video ended, we are gonna make a choice, and after we make a choice, the entire loop begins again. So the new video that we chose, we get its stuff, we get its respective end screens, and we do everything again. So high level, this is what the code does, but naturally now we have to look at how you actually download and play the video. So let's look at this right now, and actually I could make this a little bit bigger. Okay, there you go, now it's better. So this function downloads and plays the video. Luckily, the library that we use to get the video information is also the same to download the video. So it's pretty simple to download the video, all you need to do is do the exact same code, but then say, once you completed downloading, then run the function play video. And actually, in order to download, this is all we're doing. So we're getting a stream, so we are taking from the YouTube video a stream, and basically a stream would be the video, but in a certain quality. And as you can see, we're making sure that it's ordered by resolution, so we get the best quality possible, and then we are downloading it. Once it has finished downloading, it's gonna try to play the video. And now, how do you actually play the video? How do I actually send this video to OBS? Well, it's actually simpler than it looks. As you can see right here, OBS has a media source. Media source basically means that OBS can stream from a video. So this is exactly what OBS is doing. It's not receiving the video per se, but it's actually getting the video from right here. Let me actually stop this script so I can actually look at the video. So right here we have the latest video that we downloaded, and if we open it on Mac, as you can see right here, we are gonna have the video. And this is the video that OBS is attempting to stream. But now this is not as straightforward, because there is a problem, okay? Let's say that OBS is streaming this video, okay? And let's say that midway through, a choice is being made, so this video reloads, and you know, the, the file changes, because you know, the video is actually getting downloaded to this default video path, which is always the same, 1.mp4. So what happens then? What does OBS do? Well, OBS doesn't care, it will continue streaming the old video till the end of time. I learned this the hard way, OBS actually caches the video information and keeps it for himself. So the same old video is gonna keep playing, and naturally we don't want that, we want to progress at a certain time. So not only we have to download the video, we also have to tell OBS, hey dude, you have to reload the content so that we can watch the new video. So this is the reason for this code right here. As you can see, we have a file, a text file, which is called, uh, let me see what the name of the file is, it's info.text, and we're actually writing some information into this file. We're actually writing some really simple information, all we're writing is the text fetch. And you may say, Nico, why are we writing this? What's the, what's the point? What's the purpose? 
and uh, the purpose is if we go into OBS right here. So something beautiful about OBS is that you can integrate it with some custom plugins. In this case, I used a really famous plugin called Advanced Scene Switcher. And this plugin, even if the name might seem, I, I don't know, a little bit underwhelming, it actually does much more than just switch scenes. Look how many options you can do with this plugin, it's, it's amazing. You can download this plugin for free, I'm gonna leave links in the description naturally uh, on how to do this if you wanna do this by yourself. It's a little bit of a headache, but it's, it's not that hard once you figure it out. Uh, right here, you can actually set up a macro. Now, if you guys don't know what a macro is, a macro is basically something, an action that happens when certain conditions are met. And this is what we are doing right now. Basically, I'm checking if the file that we are writing to, the info file, has in its content the word fetch, then I'm gonna do a certain action. If the file has the word fetch, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace that word and change it to done, because just so I know that OBS actually responded to me. And then I'm also gonna do another thing. I'm gonna reload the media source. Now I figured this out by trial and error, but basically if you get the source that is actually streaming the video and you change its settings to anything, like even if you don't actually change the settings, but you just, you know, set the settings, like do a set settings command, then the stream, the media source is actually gonna refresh and the stream is gonna start at the beginning. And as you can see, we can simulate it right now. So uh, if we go to the advanced scene switcher and we go to the macro, we can simulate the macro running. And okay, I didn't press anything yet. Uh, wait, what? what? How are people voting? Wait, I'm confused. The stream is supposed to be unlisted. How are people voting? Anyway, we can try running the macro right now as a test. And as you can see, as soon as I run it, the video is gonna refresh. So yeah, run it again, as you can see, the video refreshes. And that exactly is what I want. So as soon as a new video gets downloaded, the video is gonna refresh. And now you will be able to see it in action. As soon as this video ends, a new choice is gonna get made. We didn't get into how the choice works yet. I'm gonna show you the code next. But as soon as the choice gets made, OBS is gonna start streaming the new video because it will receive the update from the Python file. And as you can see, the video is about to end. There is gonna be a black screen for uh, a couple of seconds if there is some delay in getting the update. But then OBS will receive the update, will reload the video, and it's gonna start playing it from the beginning. Except it's a different video, so, you know, it's uh, it's like, uh, it's playing a new thing. Anyway, this is all fine and dandy, but how is the choice actually getting made? So as you can see, we are here in download and play video with the video ID. And then we wait for the video to end, and then we make a choice. But now, how is the choice actually getting made? And in order to see how the choice is getting made, we have to go into the chat loop. Now, you can imagine these two functions, play loop and chat loop, running at the same time. So they are two asynchronous functions, they don't get into their own steps. They are running at the same time, both of the functions. So they are both in different loops. And the chat one is actually using the Python chat library in order to read a live chat from a live stream and we actually have to pass the live id and the live id is none other than this one like the, just the id of the live stream so these two values will naturally change if you want to implement this in your own videos because you need to know an initial video and you need to have the live stream in order to pull up the chat from it but once we have this, we're actually gonna start looking at the chat of the video. And while the chat is alive, so, you know, people are motivated. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I think chat is alive actually refers to the live stream being, you know, actually a live stream. Um, but while the, the live stream exists, then I'm gonna try to get any new message. And now the beauty of this library is that you can retrieve the message, but you can also retrieve the author of the message. So what this complicated code is doing is actually checking if the player or the uh, user, the, the, the spectator, has entered a number in his message. So if his message is just a number, so it's a digit, and this number is between one and the number of choices that you can make. If you guys remember, I said it at the beginning of the video, the choices is the end screens. So it's between one and the number of end screens. If it's in between those values and also the player has not made a choice yet, then you can add a vote. The vote being the actual message. Minus one because, you know, I like, I prefer when choices and arrays begin with zero. So, you know, it's, it's just, you know, preferable. But, you know, let's not get confused by this uh, tiny detail. But also in the add vote function, we're going to have the 
user itself, the author, so we know, you know, that that person voted. And that's exactly what we do here. We're actually going to add a vote to the specific uh, message, so the, the, the specific choice that you want to make. And I'm also going to add the voter, the person that voted, to the list of voters. So then in the future, I can check if this person has already voted before. And before waiting half a second and doing this entire thing again, I'm actually gonna update the text file. You might say, Nico, what text file are you talking about? I'm talking about this text file, the text that you see on top of the screen. This is actually coming from another text file that, you know, is this one, that gets updated from the code itself. And this is literally the last function that, uh, you know, we still need to take a look at. All that it's doing is that it's getting all of the information about the code, uh, or the, the votes, sorry, and it's displaying it on screen. It's also displaying the total number of people that voted, and it's displaying the last people that voted. This is just a variable that we set when a vote is actually cast, so it's pretty easy to display. And literally that's it, that's the entire code base, there is nothing else to see. Well, there is a function that clear, clears the votes, uh, this only happens after you made a choice, and yeah, in fact, let, let's actually see what the make a choice function actually does, I think I missed this one. So once the video has finished its runtime, a choice is actually gonna get made, and this is the choice. Now, first of all, if nobody voted because the stream is, you know, not watched by anyone, as example, then it's gonna pick a random choice and return it. Instead, if some people have voted, it's gonna get the maximum of all of the votes, so the maximum choice, the choice that was voted the most, and then it's gonna return that one. But you might say, Nico, this code looks a lot more complicated than it's supposed to be. Well, the problem is that, you know, not always the, the choice with, uh, you know, most votes, it's only one. So right here, I'm getting all of the choices that are the maximum, and I'm returning them, uh, I'm returning one of them randomly. So this is what this code is doing. And that's it, that's the entire code reviewed. And you know, as you can see, you can see it still in action right here. So I can type one to get stone and all of that jazz. So I'm gonna show once again the finished result and you can play it right now in the description. So go check it out, it's gonna be the first link in the description. But yeah, if you really enjoy this content and want to see more, leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. Also, I might do a part two to this, showing how to actually put this code into a Google Cloud machine and make OBS run in it because it's gonna it's like it's not as straightforward as it seems. There were some complications uh, in actually controlling the virtual environment, but in the end it worked out. Anyway, I'm gonna do one last choice, which is gonna be to uh, let's uh, let's try to build to surface. Okay, this is uh, this is fun. By the way, if you wanna check out just the interactive video, you can also check it out. It's gonna be in the description, or maybe it's gonna be in the description of the live stream, not the description of this video. I don't know, I might put it in the description of the video as well. I, I have no idea. Anyway, Nico the Pro this time got unlucky because gravel dropped on his face and he's probably pro and he's probably gonna suffocate soon, so that's pretty yeah, that's pretty wild. Don't do that. Anyway guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Go play the live stream if you haven't already, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. See ya!